Hey guys, Stealth here. Let's have a look at the Chieftain Mark VI. And if you're going, what the hell is a Chieftain Mark VI? Well, I'm right there with you. I haven't actually looked at the vehicle yet, so this review is going to be right on the spot. The good news, I have keys to give away. The bad news, there's only 25 of them. If you want to participate, join the promo simple giveaway that I'm running in the description. I'm going to be running it for two days, so you have two days to enter your email address there and the winners will get picked at random. Now, um, Chieftain Mark VI, as you can see, very much resembles the Chieftain Mark V, and I'm personally very interested to see what kind of stats we can expect from this thing, especially when compared to the base Chieftain. Um, a little bit of the bad news, Chieftain Mark VI will only be available as a uh, giveaway slash premium vehicle that um, either is handed out on contests or through giveaways such as this one. Anyway, let's have a look at the specs of the vehicle. You can see that the penetration and the damage is exactly the same. They both fire APDS, they can both fire HESH. And HESH, of course, well, I personally don't really like it, but it can be useful if you don't really have a good penetration on the front of a vehicle. DPM seems to be slightly higher for the Mark VI liter, and this is still without retrofits. So we can push this DPM even higher. Hit points, the same. Armor packaging, the same. Um, the acceleration is slightly better. It seems that the Mark VI has a slightly improved engine. View range, a lot better for the Chieftain Mark VI. And surprisingly, it also has a bit better camo, but then again, you do have camo netting on the tank as well as a camouflage pattern. Gun depression and gun handling seem to all be pretty similar. The turret traverse is slightly faster for the Chieftain Mark VI leader. Reload time is a bit better, accuracy is better, aiming time is a lot better. That's almost a second that you're saving there. So, um, gotta say, I already really like the specs of the Mark VI over the Mark V. And normally, a premium vehicle isn't as good as a fully upgraded Chieftain, or as a fully upgraded, let's say, base vehicle. So, um, if you get the necessary upgrades, the Chieftain Mark V will be a bit better. But at least it's uh, the Mark VI is better than the stock Chieftain Mark V. One thing though that the Chieftain Mark V gets that the Chieftain Mark VI leader does not seem to get is the steel brew applique. With that, you're going to lose a little bit of rear armor, but you're going to get a lot of frontal turret armor in return. That's not something that the Chieftain Mark VI leader gets. You can see I have armor retrofit slots, but I don't have the steel brew applique. That, I think, is going to hurt this tank, as the real, um, let's say, weak spot of the Challenger, or, or the Chieftain, is his lower hull. You can see 100 millimeters of armor there. The redemption of the Chieftain Mark V really comes from that steel brew applique. Once you have that, you're going to be pretty much um, very, very capable going hull down. Letting everything bounce off your armor and just sitting there as you're dishing it out. Personally, I didn't really like the Chieftain Mark V for that aspect because it seemed to be a really defensive tank. But other than that, um, the tank was okay. The tank was okay. The Chieftain Mark VI leader does not seem to have this capacity. And with that, I kind of fear for the capabilities that this vehicle has. Because 195 and 100 millimeters, that's something that most main battle tanks are just going to laugh at and go through. If that was um, decent, we could make this vehicle workable. Um, let's say if you had great mobility, great acceleration, great max speed, you could at least get from cover to cover quickly, only stick out your gun for a little bit, fire, and pull back. And the low amount of targeting time does seem to promote that kind of playstyle. But it doesn't really have great mobility. So, again, I'm rather fearing for how well this vehicle will perform. Anyway, let's start to retrofit this vehicle a little bit. Um, I want to get as much firepower as possible, so I'm going to go with Experimental Propellant Mark 1, get more damage on that gun. We have two armor retrofit slots, and for that I'm going to go with Internal Hull Reinforcement Mark 2, as well as, uh, let's say, the ammo rack. I usually don't like it when my ammo rack gets hit because it means less DPM. And then we have another firepower retrofit slot, which is rather unusual. Of course, the first one that I'm using is the general 
fire uh, the general retrofit so you can install anything there and actually come to think of it the intercom system mark 3 might be better there so switching that around getting intercom mark 3 mounted on the vehicle consumables I'm always going with the let's say the standard kit um, let's switch this around spare parts mark 2 if you pick the more expensive ones you're always going to get the passive bonuses even if you don't use them in the battle and if you don't use them you don't have to buy them again now for the ammo I'm not going to take that many hash rounds let's say 10 of the hash rounds and uh, 39 heat rounds or APDS uh, confirm that crew skills I have already equipped I have spin to win to improve hull traverse off-road driving to increase acceleration at least a little bit do the twist again turret traverse get the gun on target faster as well as quick draw to lower aim time then there's rapid fire reload re um, reload time reduced by two and a half seconds or 2.5 percent sorry two and a half seconds would be amazing and ammo swap speed if I do want to switch from APDS to heat now for the commander um, let's see which one would be best for this tank minimum accuracy crew hit points vision range oh that's where the vision range comes from from the chieftain mark 5 to the mark 6 that's this commander I am thinking that um, I don't really need max for this one although turret traverse might be useful reputation gains again don't really need that I want this thing for credit gains not reputation Aim speed from Carlos, module damage, reload time it reduced. Yeah, let's take this one. And of course I can always switch this around. Let me know what commander you would pick for this type of vehicle. Alright, resupply automatic, um, repair automatic of course, and resupply the consumables automatically. Now normally, and that's since the patch that came out today, and today is 21st of January 2016, you can deploy camo but this thing comes with a unique camo so if I for example switch to the BMP2 you can see that I can now equip camo but the Chieftain Mark 6 just doesn't have that or doesn't need it alright I think we're ready let's turn this thing into battle and see how well it's going to perform I'm gonna be pretty careful with this vehicle because I don't really see it performing too well considering hold downs not an option mobility is not really an option and um, altogether most of the tanks can quite easily pen this vehicle so I'm a bit reluctant to put this thing on the front line and I think hold down is an absolute must even if I don't have the steel brew applique let's see what kind of matchmaking this thing gets not preferential matchmaking apparently otherwise it would be limited to tier 5 MBT-70, T-72A, very dangerous tanks for this vehicle. The AFVs, probably not so much, but again the T-64s on the enemy team are going to go right through the armor on this one. So, yeah, let's see if this is actually going to work well. As for positioning, I'm thinking that the zone over here on the north would be decent. Over here on the south, you're usually not finding yourself shooting downwards or not having a lot of turret cover or hull cover. So I'm going to go north towards uh, B8. Let's see what uh, kind of allies I got. I got a Typhoon, BMD2, T72, Fox, ERC90, T64, two artilleries of course. Two AV is going to push south. Hmm. Normally I back up one of the strongest tanks and just try to keep it alive as best I can, but with this tank I'm just going to head north and see what happens. Mobility, it sets 48 on the tin I think, but I'm only getting 31 and that's on the main road. There's not a lot of terrain resistance, I'm not really going uphill. So that 48 kph that was advertised, nah, not really getting there now we're getting somewhere 44 of course turning is going to slow it right down again I don't want to get hit look at that BMD2 pent me with an ATGM and an ERC90 so we just have the swing fire and myself over on this corner yeah what could possibly go wrong BMD1 pushing in, and they know I'm here. I've still been designated. There. Few ranges out. 
Swing fire is taking massive amounts of damage. Moreover, swing fire is out. I think I'm going to need a hand here. Let's see if I can put that excellent gun to work. Hit. Of course, this is only a BMD-1. It's not that heavily armored. Leopard 1A5. Slightly more armored. Going through. They penetrated me very easily. Lower hull, of course. Identify. Tank. Come on, come out again. Didn't penetrate the turret. BMD-1 seems to be trying to get a shot. Yeah, I'm gonna die right quick. I'm completely alone here. Shot going in. I got absolutely no cover here. Let's see if I can make this work for a bit. Oh, HGM coming in. Ooh, that was close. That was close. Come on, Leo. That's down. So oh, I bounced something. There's a first. That 272 year old though. Hit going in. Uh oh, there comes Thor Hammer. <coughs> and he got me. T72 in the end. 1850 damage. 2080 damage taken. So I did less damage than I could have done, or at least than my health pool was. Let's see. Um, I really didn't have a lot of cover there. I was just on my own against three to four vehicles. What could this tank have done better? Maybe go hold down a bit more. Uh, full back faster, although we would have been shot in the side by the LAV there and the big light panzer. Not really too sure. I'm going to pause the video here, wait for the results screen to come up, and then see how much money making potential this thing actually has. Alright, results are in, and unsurprisingly that was not very effective. 1600 XP, 80, 89,000 credits, which netted me 73,000. Place on the team, halfway through, with the amount of damage that I've done. Not really a great start, but let's just say that that's mostly due to my playstyle and not exactly due to uh, the vehicle itself. Load up another match. The battle queue currently has quite a few tier 6s, so I would not be surprised if I keep seeing tier 6. A couple of tier 4s, maybe. There we go, we're already getting thrown in. To be sure, I'm not sugar picking these replays or these gameplays. Replay feature is still not implemented in Armored Warfare, so what you're seeing is just what I'm recording live. No idea what kind of match I'm getting, no idea what map I'm getting. So, this is pretty much the performance that I get out of the vehicle. And again, I'm still learning how to work this thing. Chieftain Mark V is an enemy team. Terminator, Leo 2 AV, MBT 70. Lots of main battle tanks there. A couple of tank destroyers. It seems that they only have the Terminator for recon. Our recon is a lot better. We got the BMP 2, the Fox. We have the Swing Fire. We got a couple of light tanks who might be able to do some spotting. As for the way the thing looks, I do like the way that they put the camo netting on the barrel a little bit on the turret, which I suppose means that I should be able to hide everything below the turret and just play it as a sort of dug-in tank. Although, dug-in tanks? Um, yeah, there's artillery. So, I'm not going to get that dug in with this vehicle, or at least not safely. I think that my best bet is over on the left flank, where I might be able to use the ditches here in order to hide the main hull and only keep the turrets sticking out. If I take the vehicle over there, I'm not too sure I can do that because the threat might be coming from above. And with my 100 millimeters of lower hull armor, I am definitely not going into that port. Not with all those heavy damage dealers on the enemy team. Again, mobility, oh, that's decent. It's decent. 46, 48, 52 going downhill. There's an MBT-70. Oh, it's the same guy I was in the uh, game last time with, McBang. He was a bit salty at the end of the game. Okay, already getting spotted. Let's get into this ditch and hide this big ass hull of this vehicle. Now with this I can perfectly shoot up at them. They hopefully don't have the gun depression to shoot back at me. T-72 
272, BMPT. Let's see. My spotting range isn't perfect, but it might be enough to spot the BMPT. Deathstroke. Oh, I actually got spotting damage for that, probably. I'm just being very aggressive here. There's a T64. A T64? That's a bit unusual. I have to be very careful here on this flank. These units are likely to sneak up on me and try to get a shot in. If I'm looking towards the left flank. Look at that, the fox is kiting the Terminator around. Beautiful sight. Until it died. I really doubt I'm going to be able to get a shot in, not at that speed. Alright, so we lost one recon, which was probably going to make a straight line towards the artillery. Didn't really work out for him. There's a bit of a dip in the terrain that I might be able to exploit, only sticking out my turret. As this T-64 might be planning on going across. Still though, if that Terminator gets a good view on me, fires four ATGMs, which I don't think is going to last too long, then this vehicle is going to lose a lot of hit points. Come on. Identify. Hostile tank. I can see them, but I don't think we have any shooters. No one with a really decent gun to land shots on that. Maybe the artillery though, the 109. Come on. Oh, hello. Identify. Hostile tank. Gun is still taking its sweet time to aim in. Come on. Oh, that was surprising. Whatever works. Let's see if we can do that again. 272 destroyed another one. Track damage. Wonderful. Somehow they're not spotting me though. The Terminator just decided to relocate to the hill. That means that this T64 is now alone. So hopefully, we can work with that. Yeah, there's just too many vehicles here. Leopard 2 Ice, there's the Terminator. Incoming, just incoming. wiping units off the map. Artillery, of course. Tank. Maybe I'm playing this thing all wrong. Maybe I should be going up that road. And using the gun depression, which, let's see across the flank of the vehicle. That's not bad. I might be able to work this gun depression in order to get some sneaky shots without exposing too much other than the turret. It's going to be a while before I actually get up there. Oh, there's 264 again. Don't shoot me. My hull is not designed to be shot at. Come on. There you go. Gonna push up a little bit. 264, you wanna do it again? No? Oh, he's backing off. 340. Not too bad, but that means I need two more shots in order to kill this guy. Or not. High damage roll. Alright, 1400 damage done. 215 taken. Identified. Hostile truck. There's a TD who's looking the other way. I really doubt I'm going to be able to get up here. Not with the engine power or lack of engine power that I have. Identified. At least not fast. Oh, hello. That went straight through the turret. And they're just going to keep doing that. Instead, I might be better served trying to help out against this Terminator here. Yeah, no way. And now I'm all alone. Flanked by a T-72 and two tank destroyers. As well as a Terminator. What could possibly go wrong? Hit. 
ATGM. That's the Terminator. So the ERC is running. Incoming, incoming. Oh, wonderful. Multiple systems down. That one ERC is running, but he pretty much nailed me in position here. Identified. Not really anywhere I can go. Oh, come on. There's Terminator. Artillery's just gonna keep raining on me. Ultraverse is either not what it used to be, or just not that good. There's Terminator. There's the ERC. Lost a track. Yeah, I definitely have to learn how to work this vehicle. Yep. Oh, hello, ERC. What? That bounced? This gun bounced? Well, okay. So, I did slightly more damage. Um... Aside from that, <laughs> not really too well. I'm not sure if I'm being too aggressive or not aggressive enough. Again, still learning how to work this vehicle. Let's see how much experience and credits this got me. Maybe a bit more, because I may have gotten some spotting damage here and there. 117,000, 2,000 XP with 99,000 net. That's still a lot less than I usually make in the tier 6 premium tanks, like the Terminator, the EXP, and the MBT-70. So, currently I'm not too impressed with this vehicle yet. I think that in PvE it's going to be a bit safer. It will be a decent XP grinder there. But, again, not so much credits, and what you're getting this thing for is credits. So, look, a third time's a charm, or at least, so I hope. Let's see if I can get in here with a decent result. Again, a lot of tier 6s in this matchup. Quite a few lower tiers, a bunch of tier 5s. How high up did I get in the team ranking? Third. McBang, again, highest tier or highest damage dealer. Aside from that, hmm. And I think that Warlord, this guy, Warlord Net, who did no damage, was the one who was flaming people who were buying tanks. Isn't that interesting? The guy who did nothing started flaming others. Welcome to online gaming. We hope you enjoy your stay. Come on, there should be enough people. 16 at tier 4, 19 at tier 5. If only this thing could get the Steel Brew applique, it would be a very decent tier 5 premium. Until it does, and you do want to get a tier 5 premium, and you don't get the lucky with the giveaway, you could always just go for the tier 5 Chieftain, this Chieftain Mark V, unlock it completely, and then get it battle hardened for 1100 gold. That is not going to make it a um, complete premium, because it only gets you 25% more credits than normal. But it will at least give you better survivability than the Chieftain Mark VI will. Or at least, that's my estimation. Oh, wonderful. Lost Island. Not one of my best maps, but it does have a lot of potential for going hold down with this vehicle. So, even... If this is my favorite map, Lost Island might be, let's say, the redemption of the Chieftain Mark VI. I have a Stingray and a Leo 2 AV on my team, ERC 90s, a whole bunch of swing fires, starships, two Arties, poor Arties, there's not really any good artillery angles on this map, or I haven't found them. VFM 5, MBT 70, one Chieftain Mark V, and the rest is pretty lightly armored. I should be able to pen everything, maybe barring the MBT-70. If it's hiding its lower frontal plate, I'm not really going to be able to pen that reliably. Still love the look of this map, though. Aircraft carrier on fire, littoral combat ship pushing up. And getting hit, apparently. 
Now, if I want to work this hull turret or the uh, gun depression as well as hiding the hull, I'm not going to stay on the outside. I need to get more towards this mountainous terrain. Because right there, there's a bit of cover that I can hide my lower hull behind. Very nice to have the 2AV here. There's the MBT-70. We can take that thing out between us, that'd be great. It seems to be going around, though. Come on. If you could just park off to the side of the road, so that we could both fit in here, that'd be great. Alright. We've been Hostile spotted. T-64 does not want to come out and play. Truck, mark. Or not yet. I've got to say that the amount of time it takes to aim in with this gun, which is 2.1 seconds, is very good. Identify. It oh, really okay. makes it easy to get sort of snapshots. There, 346. Backing down, bounced it. Although I'm not sure that was the turret, but more likely to be the upper plate. Upper frontal plate. ATGM. It didn't go through. Well, that's surprising. Seems that this MBT-70 is getting a bit aggressive here. Leo 2AV spotted that too. Come on. Bit more. Okay, you go there, I'll take this flank. There's the starship. Up out, he sees me, shoot, and I'm back. And I got hit. But I got hit by the Typhoon too. Not really what I was expecting. And again. This thing is going to go through my turret like butter. Not interested in slugging it out with a Typhoon. Way higher rate of fire, way better penetration, and I cannot even see the bloody thing. So, let's see if I might be able to get a shot at the Starship or the ERC. And I wouldn't be surprised if the ERC is going to show up right there as a flanking maneuver. Been spotted. Probably from the rear, from that BMP-1. God, this halter or the turret traverse is now really bad. It's with the damaged turret ring. There, that's him down. There's Chief Mark V. Oh, AGGM. Into the flank of my vehicle. And there's... Damn it, there's threats all around. Come on. Bit of a snapshot, but I don't really have a choice currently. Oh, hello, Typhoon. He completely knocked out the gun. HGM. Come on, get that gun fixed. Now is as good as time as ever. Bounced. If he's gonna bounce, the ERC might not, because I'm showing him the side of my turret. Typhoon's backing up. That's good. Stay away. Snapshot, no hit. Gotta keep backing up. As long as I can keep my rear of the vehicle towards my friendlies, that's at least a decent chance of staying alive. Good hit in the ERC. ERC bounced. Why? Here's the Typhoon. Hit. He's gonna kill me. Yeah. 2300 damage. Again, not too sure what I could or should have done differently there. If I'd been more aggressive and pushed over that ridge, I would have gotten killed. If I would have pushed east, so let's say along with the Leopard 2 AV, I would m more likely than not have been killed. If um, I would have pushed towards the ERC, then I would get shot in the rear by the Typhoon twice, maybe three times before I died. So I just don't see it. And, again, as far as I'm concerned, not having good turret or hull armor really limits the potential of the vehicle. And it doesn't really matter whether you have this amount of armor or the amount of armor of the Leopard. Either you have enough to bounce, to go hull down, or not. And if you don't have it, it's going to make it more difficult to drive this tank. So some people have already proclaimed the Chieftain Mark VI as a sort of Type 59 of Armored Warfare. 
in the way that it's a very exclusive vehicle. It might be exclusive, it doesn't mean it's a great vehicle, um, or I just have not figured out how to work it yet. It's probably likely something to be in between those two. Anyway, again, if you want to participate in the giveaway, the link to that is in the description down below. It's just a giveaway for 25 keys, and I'm expecting quite a few participants, so um, don't be um, too unhappy if you don't get the key, I'm afraid. I only have 25 to give out. I might be able to get Armored Warfare to give me a few more, but I doubt it. Anyway, let's see how this battle is going to continue. 2AV is backing off, trying to disengage. ERC is dead. Just a Typhoon now. Typhoon's a pretty fast vehicle, though. It will not be able to one-shot either of these vehicles. 1A5. It's going to get hit, no doubt. Quite a bit. And there we go. So, 2300 damage. It's the same damage amount that I did when I lost the previous battles. Let's see if this is going to get me any kind of a better result as far as XP goes, because for now I'm not too happy. There, that's a bit better. 6,000 XP, 20, uh, sorry, 220,000 credits. That nets me 200,000 credits, and now we're actually getting somewhere. Team-wise, second in the team after the Leo 2 AV. Um, I didn't really do that much damage, only slightly more than my own hit point pool. Would I recommend the vehicle? Mm, not really, not really. Personally, I prefer faster vehicles. Vehicles that are more mobile, more agile, or vehicles that at least can go hull down, like the Chieftain Mark V with the applique on it. This one just doesn't seem to have the stats, and although it looks really nice with the camouflage, I wouldn't be too concerned if you don't get to drive this vehicle, because you can still um, turn your Chieftain Mark V into a sort of semi-premium, into a battle-hardened vehicle, and then just apply some camouflage. You will not get the camo netting, but you will probably be able to get at least somewhere near this type of camouflage. Anyway, again, link in the description, join in, see if we can get this vehicle for you. Got 25 keys to give away, and let's hope you'll be one of the winners. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next video.